Hey guys, this is Professor Abood coming to you from Bali, Indonesia, and I just wanted to remind you guys that you only have the pleasure of having me for three more weeks, and then it, you have your practical test, so hopefully you've been learning everything we've been doing in lab. Okay, so this week we're going to talk about factors affecting reaction rates. So, there are, well, we're really going to look at three different factors um, affecting reaction rates. Uh, the reaction that we're going to be using is magnesium with hydrochloric acid, and we're going to be looking at how temperature, concentration of reactants, and surface area affect the rate of reaction. And this is the first week that we're going to use, um, that we're going to mix our own molarities of acids, so you should be really excited for this. Um, no, it's actually pretty, it's, I, I mean, I'm pretty excited about it. It's, it's, it's fun to figure out how much you need of, of a certain acid to get a certain lower strength acid. So anyway, well, the first test that we're going to do, remember, this is our, this is our um, uh, reaction. We're going to have magnesium and hydrochloric acid. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to see how acid concentration affects the reaction rate. So how it affects the total time for that piece of magnesium to be consumed. We're going to prepare three molar 2 molar, 1.5 molar, and 0 0.8 molar hydrochloric acid samples of 20 milliliters. Um, and you're going to do that by just mixing it with water. And so you're going to have to use this equation up here and figure out how much exact, exactly how much water you need to prepare your solution. Um, we're also going to look at temperature. So we're going to mix a 1 molar hydrochloric acid and test it how long it takes to dissolve our, our ribbon of uh, magnesium at 15 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Celsius, and 45 degrees Celsius. Um, we're going to be using Bunsen burners, so just, you know, be careful, they're gas, um, you know, try not to blow yourself up. Um, finally, we've got surface area. So surface area is going to be measured, how do you change surface area? And you might be wondering, how does surface area even affect it? Um, well, let's see, I'll try to, I'll try to explain this uh, a little bit. So if you've got a very small circle of girls and a very large circle of boys, so if all the boys try to kiss the girls, see, it's kind of hard for them to all get, get kissed, right? Whereas if you have a very large amount circle of girls, there's a lot of space for them to, to mingle and, and kiss each other. So surface area is the same in chemistry. So essentially, instead of uh, having boys and girls kissing, you've got molecules reacting with each other. So if you've got a very large surface area, um, there's a lot of opportunity to react. In this case, you know, like for example, if we had, so let's say we take this blob and we split it up into a lot of small blobs, you'll notice that you have a lot more surface area in which uh, the reaction can take place. So hopefully that explains it well enough. If you are still confused, let me know and I will explain it a little better. So we're going to curl these magnesium ribbons into very small, tightly curled ribbons and into very open ribbons. And this, essentially what we're trying to do is when we curl them very tightly is to not allow them to have a lot of surface area, whereas if we spread them out a lot, they have a lot of surface area. And so we're going to measure how long it takes for that to dissolve. So why do you even care about reaction rates? Well, so if we talk about the chemical industry or the brewing industry or the oil industry, all of those things have these big reactors that essentially are made to optimize the reaction. And let's say I buy these reactors, which by the way are probably worth about a million dollars a piece. They're glass lined on the inside, they're stainless steel on the outside. Um, so anyway, these reactors at a million dollars a piece are pretty expensive. So if you spend 30 seconds in your reaction before you can push it out instead of one second, imagine how much more of your product you're going to have. So these, the, the reaction rates are very important for big chemical reactions. Um, so that should essentially cover lab seven and we're also going to be doing lab eight.